Welcome to our review on the changing nucleus. So first thing is a couple of terms that we've already met in our chemistry. The atomic number, if you remember, is the number of protons or the number of electrons present within an atom. And the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Now what we actually find is that all atoms of the same element will have the same atomic number, but remember different isotopes could have different mass numbers. First one we're going to look at then is alpha decay. So what we need to remember first of all is that an alpha particle is a helium nucleus. So that tells us it's made up of two protons and two neutrons. So what we actually find then is if we've got our unstable nucleus that's going to undergo alpha decay, we're going to be losing an alpha particle from it. So that means we're going to be losing two protons and two neutrons from it. So we will see a change to both the atomic number and the mass number. So if we have a look and see what that actually means in terms of numbers, because we're losing two protons and two neutrons, that means the mass number is going to decrease by four. The atomic number, however, will only decrease by two because that obviously is only the two protons. Because we're changing the atomic number, then we've changed the element as well. So the equation at the bottom there gives you an example of what might occur on your exam paper. Some of those numbers would be missing and you'd have to fill them in. So we start off with uranium, which has a mass number of 238 and an atomic number of 92. And we're going to be making our new element, which is going to be thorium in this case, which has the mass number 234, four lower than obviously our uranium, and the atomic number of 92, which is two lower than uranium. And the difference there, the mass number of four and the atomic number of two, goes on to the alpha particle. So all you need to do to make sure you get that right is double check that the mass numbers add up to the same on both sides and the atomic numbers add up to the same on both sides. And remember that the alpha particle is a mass of four and the atomic number of two. Second one then is beta decay. So what we actually find happening in beta decay is that our neutron is actually gonna break up to make a proton and that beta particle, which remember is a high speed electron. So what we actually see happening there then is that the nucleus is going to lose a neutron. However, it gains a proton because remember that neutron is being changed into a proton and the high speed electron. So because we've lost a neutron but gained a proton, the mass number stays the same. But the difference here is in the atomic number. Because we've gained a proton, that means the atomic number is going to increase by one. So because the atomic number has changed, we've made a new element. And at the bottom there, we've got the equation. So we're gonna start off with carbon, which has the mass number 14 and the atomic number of six. It's gonna undergo the beta decay. So we've got a beta particle on the right there, mass number is zero, and then our atomic number is minus one. And then that's obviously going to make our nitrogen, which has the atomic number seven, and the mass stays the same at 14. And again, you've just got to make sure that those numbers add up to the same on both sides to check you've got it right. The final type of decay then is our gamma decay. Now, if you remember what we said, a gamma ray then is just a high frequency electromagnetic wave. Because it has no mass and no charge, then what we see is that there is no effect on the mass number or the atomic number and the element stays the same. All we're doing is losing that energy, which then makes it stable. Okay, but the nucleus remains unchanged. So the same mass number, the same atomic number, the same element. The only thing that's different is we are emitting that gamma ray. 